According to one theory, our universe is located inside of a black hole. If this is the case, where is our universe's singularity? Some equations related to a black hole mm -hmm. apply to our entire universe, such as we have an event horizon. We, we have a horizon. Right, we do. It's analogous to event horizon of a black hole. If you look at the density of matter in the universe out to that event horizon, it is the density of matter you would need to make a black hole the size of our universe. Wow. But is it a black hole, okay? Right. And so if it is, then there ought to be a singularity somewhere, somewhere that we haven't seen, we, haven't we seen. don't know where it is. A whole new space time opens up inside the black hole. If you look back at us, the future history of the universe runs its course and a whole other space time opens up. So each black hole would contain a universe. A universe. But that universe is not sharing the space time of our universe. Right. So they're worried, will it fill up or bump in? No, in higher dimensions, you can fit everything. Right, and all, it, yeah, it doesn't make a difference. That, that's right. You have a sheet of paper that goes to infinity, two dimensions. If I go into a third dimension, I can have another sheet of paper that goes, goes to, infinity, to infinity. And it does not intersect the first. Exactly. In fact, I can have an infinite, infinite number, number of, of infinite sheets of paper. One above the other. Correct. So when you add higher dimensions, you don't have to think or worry about, you know, stepping on each other's toes. It can happen. Right. You just, it's, it's not a thing. Does life require liquid water? Maybe all it requires is liquid. On one of Saturn's moons, Titan, oh, it yeah. is so cold yeah. that methane has liquefied and it has become lakes and rivers. There are meandering rivers and river deltas on oh, Titan, Titan of running methane. And methane is chemically reactive just the way oxygen is. Mm -hmm. So now we imagine life, life on Titan with methane as the fluid that is carrying nutrients from one mm -hmm. part of the creature mm -hmm. to another. And if that's the case, then this whole concept of a Goldilocks zone has to be revisited. You know. So here's what we do. We look up in the universe and we say, okay, there, we see galaxies. Hubble discovered that these fuzzy things in the night sky are entire galaxies, such as our Milky Way. Major discovery in 1926. And then in 1929, he discovers that these fuzzy things that we now identify as whole galaxies are hurtling away from one another. And this is the first evidence that the universe is expanding. People just think this up. Oh, it must be, no, no, it was an observation. And then we looked to see if it fit Einstein's general theory of relativity, and it did. General theory of relativity is the modern understanding of gravity. And if anything's happening in the universe, it's gonna involve gravity. If the universe is bigger today than it was yesterday, that must mean it was bigger yesterday than it was the day before, and then the day before. So what happens if we just turn the clock back? When you do this, because you see how fast we're expanding, just reverse that. You can do it on a pen and paper, on the back of an envelope. You've seen that thing on, on Jupiter, that storm that never quits. Isn't it suspicious to you that a storm there could go on for 350 years without a break, and we never have storms that go on for 350 years without a break? We don't even have storms that go on for like six weeks without a break. When we have storms, it's in our atmosphere, mm -hmm. so that's gas. We rotate once a day. That rotation creates a what we call a Coriolis force. The Coriolis force is heightened if you spin faster. So what is Jupiter? It's thousand times bigger than Earth. It's mostly gas and it rotates once in about 10 hours. You wanna talk about ferocious Coriolis forces. We have storms that last weeks on this little speck we call Earth that has this much atmosphere on it. Go to a planet that rotates twice as fast, 10 times as wide, a thousand times the volume and is mostly gas and you're complaining that it lasted 300 years? <laughs> <laughs> be the living light. in an infinite universe, but all we have access to is our little bubble. And so every year goes by, the bubble gets one light year larger. Oh, wow. And we see a little bit more of whatever universe is out there. Here's what makes it like lose sleep deep, okay? You ready? So how is it we can see the birth of the universe? That already happened. It's because it takes light time to travel. We look out 13.8 billion light years ago, we are seeing galaxies being born. Wait a billion years. Now these galaxies are a billion years older. They're no longer being born. In fact, they're not giving us this light that I was telling you about that became microwaves. But wait a minute, the universe is now 15 billion years old. I can now see objects that have given their light to me from 15 billion years ago. They are now being born. As long as there is a universe out there, and as long as the whole universe had the same birth date, which all evidence points to, I will always see evidence of the Big Bang because that information is always fresh to us from a distance whose light only just now reached us. So what you're gonna look for is the day when this expanding horizon washes over nothing. 
If this expanding horizon moves and there's no galaxies there and there's nothing, then all the information about the formation of the universe goes away. And the Big Bang no longer has anybody telling us it is going through a Big Bang. If you're in an elevator and you cut the elevator cable, up until the point you hit the bottom, you are weightless. You're in free fall. Uh, here's an experiment you do. It's the, a very cool, cheap experiment. Take a tall glass of water in a paper cup, make sure it's tall, fill it with water, punch holes in the side. Obviously, the water's gonna leak out. The water at the bottom hole will spew out farther than the water in the holes high because the water weighs more above it. There's more pressure at the bottom to spray the water out. It's all because of the weight of the water. Take that cup of water while it's spilling, drop it. The instant it leaves your hand, it is weightless because it's in free fall. The cup is weightless, the water is weightless. And if the water has no weight, then the water does not know to exit the hole in the side of the cup that you punctured. So the instant you drop that cup, the water cuts off. It just stops. But while it fell, it is evidence that the water became weightless. What do you think unlocking the secrets of dark matter could do for us scientifically? Would it lead us to being able to harness it? We have no idea what dark matter is. And right now, the going thinking is that it is a category of particle that simply doesn't interact with us electromagnetically. Electromagnetism is like light and all the things that make atoms stick together as molecules. You are held together by electromagnetic forces. And therapy twice a week. <laughs> These, this would be a category of particles that does not interact with our electromagnetic forces, which means they just pass right on through like you're not even there. So they how do you do observe something like that? Gravitationally. The only reason why we know there's dark matter here is because, well, we have some galaxies, but add up all the matter in those galaxies, it doesn't account for what's going on in this part of the neighborhood. How do these planets sustain their orbits? Are they pulling on each other and in what way and how? He figures all this out. But wait a minute, every time Earth goes around the backside between the sun and Jupiter, Jupiter's gonna tug on it a little bit. Comes back around again, Jupiter tugs on it again. Jupiter has a strong gravity. What's gonna ultimately happen to Earth's orbit? In this scenario, Earth's orbit will become more and more elongated. The gravitational tug of war between the sun and Jupiter will yank Earth out of its orbit, destabilizing the solar system. Not only Earth, the other planets as well. He said, oh my gosh, this will take time, but clearly the solar system is stable. So he writes, I don't can't understand why it's stable because I know my equations work. So God must step in every now and then to fix things. Now you gotta be badass to invoke God at the limits of your knowledge when you explain so much with the equations you wrote. That by Newton was a God of the gaps invocation. He brought in God when there was something about the natural world could not explain and did not know. 